What's going on? This is The Gamer Buff, a weekly rundown of gamer news. I'm Jefferson Carps with The Gamer Buff, Duff Larson. There he is. What's going on, Duff? Not much. How are you doing, Carps? I'm splendid. I am splendid. Listen, I, let's get right into the news. Todd the Gack Howard. Todd <laughs> Howard. All right. Starfield, massive game. Um, it's got poor reviews, Duff. Todd Howard basically came out and said... They didn't get what I was going for. Yeah, uh, total d bag in a coffee shop energy. If you ask me, like just mo- grow your goddamn goatee and move to the mountains and stop annoying people. Um, I, you know, he made a decent game in Starfield. It was very successful, but I mean, to tell people they don't get your game or like, oh, it was too much. It was uh, just. I don't know. You just come off sounding like a complete prick. Like, I don't care how good your games are. I love Skyrim. I I fucking love Fallout 3, New Vegas the most, and 4. Um, but, you know, like, shut the fuck up sometimes is what I'm Yeah, Doug, it's, it's weak. Todd Howard uh, rubs people the wrong way. And basically, his thing was they didn't get what we were going for, which is weak. And uh, the whole thing behind, like, Starfield, that massive game, massive success. So just shut up and, like, move on with your life. No, because the reviews aren't that great. So Todd Howard basically (laughs) says, our other games are so awesome that while this game is awesome, it's a different kind of awesome from our other awesome games. And those people are only half awesome and didn't get how awesome this awesome game is. Don't blame the people. The game uh not as good. You it's not a giant massive open world of of terrific game. It's uh a bunch of boring little planets that are all the same. That's all people that's are saying. Fair. And that's what he should work on. There's not going to be any changes in Starfield. Todd Howard, Todd Gack Howard um defensive. Gross. Yeah, I I don't like it. I mean, the game was all right. It wasn't the worst, but like you said, you know, it was just kind of like Ho hum level repeated at nauseum. Bottom line, the poor reviews were not because it was different; they were because it was not as good. Moving on, let's move on to something fun. Mouse PI for hire. Uh, this is targeting a twenty twenty five release. Tell me about this game, please. All right, man. I mean, it's simple. It's a first person shooter. They're adding a Metroidvania twist to it, but you have the awesome cartoonish style of like Willy the Steamboat style Mickey Mouse. And it's it looks so fucking cool. <laughs> it looks great. Um they're putting some more work into it right now. Uh the director is talking about, you know, adding that like third dimensional look to it. It's still gonna have to look cartoony, but they wanna like fine tune the edges, if you will. And like there's just a lot to it. They want it to be an adult theme game and not just like swearing, but have like, you know, real, real storylines, you know, like real about uh, poverty, about yeah. economics, about post-war life. The you feel know. of the feel is 1950s America from from poverty to racism. All of it. It's it's a dark feel for a, you know, ki- somewhat cartoony looking game. Right. But. I love that. It looks great. It's I can't real. wait to play it. Let's put it on the list. It's on the list. You're gonna you're gonna preview it. You're gonna review it. Um, you know, soon enough. Yeah, it's, not a date set, but it's gonna happen. I'm really twenty five. Really looking for, forward to uh, Mouse Pi for hire. Uh, Doug, let's uh, blast to the past here. All right, let's take a break from the news. Let's, let's do a little do retro rewind because Hell this yeah. game is killing me, and I'm <laughs> sick, and I'm tired Dude. of it. Nintendo Rad Racer is the retro rewind for this week. Let me tell you something about this game. It is heartbreaking. <laughs> I got, so... You've last been playing time this thing for like a month. Man. Yeah, a couple weeks back, I was like, hey, I got the stage for the Grand Canyon. You know, it's a pretty good run. <laughs> I got a stage or two past that. I'm zipping along. Here's the problem, Doug. You crash, you burn, you die. That's you it. start all over. <laughs> it's not like gaming today. It you're done. You start it's, 
from the very, very beginning, you get one chance at it. And what's even more devastating is after you die, they show you a map of how far you went <laughs> and your little red dot representing your stupid car that crashed and didn't make it is like so close <laughs> to the next checkpoint or the finish line. I can't take anymore. Rad Racer. I fucking love it, though. Hell it's yeah, such man. a great game. Everything's moving so quick. You're on the turbo. You got to be quick with the brakes. You got to wash these cars. Every level you get to, the next level, they're like bigger assholes than the other cars. Just right. trying to yes. knock you into a sign. A true roguelite. I love it, man. Like you game. screw up once, you got to start all over. All so over. you really have to master it right. if you're going to win. So, I mean, good luck. I, I, Man, I love racing games, but I have to confess, I suck at them horribly. I don't know if I finished any other than like Mario Karts. Sure. I fucking I'm horrible, so it's, you're uh, you're another level, man. Yeah, if you're into the retro games, go back, check out Nintendo's Rad Racer. It really is fun. Like you could play, you know, multiple you can hang out and play with multiple people, not at the same time, but you take turns. It right. goes pretty quick. If you go on a run, congratulations. Let me know if you beat it. It's <laughs> fucking tough, dude. It's so really hard. tough. Rad racer. Great game. Let's continue with the news. Not exactly a racing game, but you are stealing cars. Oh, yeah. uh, GTA 6. All right. So Rockstar Games, they're trying to put the music into this bad boy that they're working on. Grand yep. Theft Auto 6. Always a great part to their game. Uh, big story, at least a little bit of an eruption on uh, X, formerly Twitter, is that um, a rock star, in quotes, uh, <laughs> said he got a low ball offer for one of his songs, his band's songs, uh, $7,500 from Rockstar Games to put this song in GTA 6. What What's going on here? Yeah, uh, it's a British synth pop band called <laughs> Heaven 17. And uh, he told Rockstar just on X to fuck off. I mean, yeah, he was brutal about it. That, flat out rejections, one way to put it. But Jesus, dude, you could have just said no. Um, I, I wouldn't have. I, I'm not an artist like this gentleman. Please. But can I can I ask you this? Yeah, absolutely. Where do you stand here? Because the angle of the stories that I've read are, are kind of with this guy. All rock star lowballed him. No. I don't think so. I, I honestly think like. It's not about the money at that point. I have bought in so many albums or songs from shit I've heard in a video game. So if you want to do really good marketing, yeah, okay, you might not have gotten a lot of money up front, but long term, people are going to be like, oh, dude, I love that song. It's from Grand Theft Auto 6. Yeah. And dude, I, I've well, gotten into bands because they were on soundtracks of video games. So in my eyes, I think that's a dumb idea. That's penny wise and a pound foolish man you're not looking ahead at all it's it, the exposure yes the exposure and someone on x formerly twitter pointed out the <laughs> exposure and he was like you know go sit on a log or something uh really <laughs> rude to people and who are you about heaven 17 it sounds like a boy band i've never heard of these clowns maybe they know bts never heard of them take the dough and uh Put your song in the game. That's pretty cool. So I'm I'm actually with uh, Rockstar Games. I'm with GTA yeah. 6 on this one. Normally honored, but yeah, I think me the guy's too. an asshole. An idiot. Speaking of assholes, Days Gone director. <laughs> this guy <laughs> blew a gasket on uh, on X, formerly Twitter. He went nuts. So what's up with this guy? Oh my God, um, John Garvin. Uh, this isn't his first John dipshit. Gone. Um, comment on X, formerly Twitter, as Jeff likes to say. Um, Contractually uh, obligated to say, I think. <laughs> I, I mean, he's upset that his character from a game, um, like basically the studio doesn't even like want to yeah. connect with him anymore. They have distanced themselves so much from, from this guy. Yeah, he's gone. Because of his previous statements, and he's upset that his character is represented in the new Astrobot game, which a lot of people are loving, by the way. It's, mm -hmm. you know, like a kid-friendly platformer for PlayStation. And, you know, they caricaturized his Deacon St. Clair, or whatever the idiot's name is, into the game. And, like, they did a good job of it. And for everyone else who's in the game, all these little games who got nods, that's just huge. It's, it's, it's a huge. badge of honor. You're in a PlayStation platformer that's talking about those titles specifically. I he's, mean, he's along characters from God of War, among others, and he's complaining about this. I, dude, 
he it's an honor. Bitching about uh, reviewers when his came, when his game came out and yeah. didn't get great scores, he was saying, "Oh, people didn't play my game. It's uh, people who can't take, you know, rough, rugged dudes. People are too woke for this." And I'm not I'm not trying to get political here, but like if you're attacking reviewers because your game sucks, I think you're on the wrong end of an argument, man. Like people can just not like your shit, man. It was a boring game. I've played it. It takes a long time for it to be good. And honestly, that character fucking sucks. He's annoying. He's bitchy and he has no redeeming qualities. If you get poor reviews like the mass audience gives your anything poor reviews, it's because it's pretty bad. It's, it's not because they're too woke. I mean, the guy's just a crybaby uh, asshole. I mean, it was a zombie motorcycle club game five years after both genres died. <laughs> Dude, you missed the fucking boat. Move yeah. on. Well, he was binging, you know, Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy and decided, <laughs> you know, it would be great. I got a great idea. So, uh, yeah, days gone. His days are gone. And um, <laughs> just, you know, zip it. Enough with the X. Dub, let's do the top five. Let's this do is it. Huge. I love the top five. We finish the show this way. Um, in honor of uh, the National Football League. Wow, that was good. Kick it up. That kick was it. really good. Kick it off. I do voices. Uh, if you need voice work, uh, two hats and a beard. Um, he's, he's our Robin Williams here. Yeah. They're not good voices. No. But they're. That one was. Voices. Most of them, garbage. No offense. Love you. It doesn't sound like I'm your gonna buds. Right. I, I we've five. talked about your buds. I love uh, your buds, but come on, he's stereotypical uh, stuff. Yeah, Let's move on. That. Come on. All right. So top five cheat code athletes. So you think it like you're playing a sporting game and this dude's just not fair. This particular character, dude, athlete um, is not fair. Let's do the top five. What do you got? Well, Jeff, I want to give you the crack at the first one. Um I, I I hogged the top four, and yeah. you know I wanted a baseball guy because Carps is the expert in those games. So yeah, okay, you so, let me know. All right, this is tough, but since we need a baseball guy on here, um, I'm going to go with Tim Raines from RBI Baseball. The speed, the power, the guy could routinely bunt for a home run. <laughs> um, he steals bases at a 100 percent uh clip he's just untouchable <laughs> out there all you gotta do is make contact and he's going to score a run tim reigns rbi baseball but this was tough because there's a couple that are gonna get left out <laughs> hell yeah uh one of them and jim maybe you can effort this for me i don't know his name and i wish i did it was something like mlb 2k 2004 and he was on the giants and i forget his name and he was right-handed but he was barry bond and everything we bill Barry Bonds, everything this guy like flicked this little bat at <laughs> would carry 500 yards for a home run. OK, also, and I haven't played this game, but according to many people uh, in, you know, on the Internet, in the interwebs, according to many people, Pablo Sanchez from Backyard oh. Baseball is the greatest <laughs> athlete of all time. Oh, yeah, I, I've heard I've heard rumors. Yes. So those two would be uh, right there with Tim Raines from RBI Baseball. RBI Baseball is the greatest baseball game ever made, though. I'll say that. Jim, find me that fake Barry Bonds, please. Dove, number four, cheat code athletes. All right, it's football time. So let's stick with football. Anyone who played Madden in the <laughs> early to mid 2000s <laughs> yep. Yep. knows how cheap Michael fucking Vic was oh my god the man was faster than everyone on the field and could throw the ball a country mile with the flick of his fucking uh -huh. wrist Unstoppable. pinpoint accuracy yeah. by the way yeah i mean he was unstoppable. stoppable <laughs> you if you had atlanta on your schedule you just pray to god he was fucking injured before you had to yeah. go against him because he was yeah. so cheap mike vick uh madden football Dude was just unstoppable. I'm sure, like, so he's up there with his 99 speed, but no, that was like 199. It was ridiculous. Oh, he man. broke the ratings. Mike Vick, uh, number four cheat code athlete. What do you got? Number three. Number three. This is a tough one, but uh, for basketball, it was only available in arcades. NBA Jam, Shaquille O'Neal. You could only get him if you went to the arcade. This man was fucking unstoppable. He could block anything anything you threw up any dunk you wanted to make Shaq was taking that shit away 
and going to the other end and most likely breaking the fucking backboard yeah, when breaking, he was done. Right. One throwing it quarter, down. Breaking the backboard. The dude was constantly on fire. He's on fire. Oh constantly my God. He fire. was unstoppable. Dude, you better choose Orlando. That's that's all we're saying. <laughs> it's that or you you're play done. NBA Jam Arcade. You better take Orlando Shaq. Number three, cheat code athlete. Number two, Doug. Number two, Jeff. Um, oh, shit. This is why I wish I would have wrote it down. Yeah. Well, Bo knows Tecmo. I'll tell oh, you that right. Much. Yes. Bo Jackson, the weaving man all by himself. God, he was the fastest man in the game. You could not stop him. And as I was pointing out to Jeff, I mean, yes, you'd get like 3,000 yards minimum if you add him. But he would go down at least once a season for a game or two. And luckily, you got Marcus Allen to back his ass up. But yeah. Bo Jackson, Bo. you couldn't catch him. No. Bo past the fucking linebackers. Touchdown. Bo knows weaving. Bo knows Tecmo. <laughs> Bo knows it all. Bo Jackson, the number two cheat code athlete from Tecmo Super Bowl. Now, a quick honorable mention from me. Uh, if we didn't have a baseball guy on the list, um, another Tecmo superstar would be in there. His name is Ronnie Lott. Absolutely. Because Ronnie Lott could rush the quarterback. And if he didn't come up with the sack <laughs> 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage, if the QB got it off with Lott taking him down, Lott would stand up, sprint 80 yards down the field the other way, and intercept the ball, doing it all in like three seconds' time. Ronnie I can attest Lott was to the that. ultimate defender. I can attest to that. The first time I ever met Carps here, we played a game of Tecmo. <laughs> he beat the ever-loving piss out. Like, I almost broke his, <laughs> his shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. Fuck yeah. Ronnie Lott. Well, listen, Ronnie Lott's incredible. Uh, quick honorable shout out, Lucas Heller, uh, FIFA soccer, <laughs> Italy, De La Savia, and this little under redheaded fuck, this underdog, this Jesus. ginger son of a bitch <laughs> from uh, Ireland, Maguire. This guy was of on, course. a one man yeah, wrecking crew. Maguire just carried uh, Ireland to so many FIFA titles back in uh, <laughs> back in the day. All right. Number one. Cheat code athlete. It's oh, man, it doesn't get any easier. I'm glad I didn't screw it up. Mike fucking Tyson from Mike Tyson's punch out. One hit, you're done, man. You're, you're going down the woo. You gotta <laughs> get back up in the game. It takes forever. And just one little, boop, you're back down. Weirdo, his feet didn't like stagger at all. They were kind of together. Right? Like, I don't know how anyway. he did that dance. But yeah. Uh, he was it, unstoppable, you know, as he should have been. I could never beat him. I honestly could never beat Mike Tyson. I don't know how the fuck you do it. You have to be perfect with your timing. Um, apparently, there's some like thing you got to look at in the background to figure it out. But I never, I never realized it, and I could never beat the motherfucker. Yeah, Mike, cheap piece of shit. Yeah, Mike Tyson from Mike Tyson's Punch Out was nearly unstoppable, and he should have been. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it was all about. If you beat him, you're awesome. Congratulations. He's the number one cheat code athlete. Dove, what do you got coming up Monday? Uh, we're going Starcom, Unknown Space. It's a fantastic, uh, just top down RPG style space exploration, man. If you want to know what it's like to be uh, Captain Janeway in Voyager. <gasps> And just travel around the star system. You go to different planets. You examine them. Shit happens. You fucking you, you build up your ship. You get stuff. You're in an unknown area all by yourself. With, oh. Say say just one or two other friendly friendly ships. I wouldn't call the it. Borg friendly. The Borg. Sorry. The Borg aren't friendly. No, no, no. This is this, oh, it's amazing. You got to play this game. It's so, a lot of fun. What's it called? I'm sorry. Starcom Unknown Space. Star they have, they had a previous one that they made. This is uh -huh. their second. I hadn't played the first. I was blown away by this. Really fun. Starcom, good. Unknown Space. Dove's review is out early Monday morning. Um, if you want to feel know what it feels like to be uh, <clears throat> Captain Janeway, right? Yeah. You can play this Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Or you could just go, Chakotay! And that's... <laughs> Let's do it. Like, Come on, it's fun. Check out hey. Check out hey. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, Jim, I'm... clean it up. What do we miss? Did you find me Barry Bond? Well, if you want to know what it is, <clears throat> how it feels to be Captain Janeway, you okay. need to become a chain smoker <laughs> first and foremost. But also, um, he your... is right. She she would have had Check out hey. Check out hey. Uh, John Dowd. Yes. Oh. Yes. 
was like the Mike Tyson <laughs> for Mike Tyson punch out in 2K 2005, I believe. Yeah. John, okay. So John Dowd, right hander for the Giants. Uh, you mean ML- Barry Bonds? What? Yeah, Mike Tyson, like but yeah, Barry Bonds Barry wouldn't give them the rights to oh, him, of course. Yeah. Likeness, so. so John Dowd, and he was a righty because they couldn't use his likeness at all. But he was Barry Bonds, and he was tremendous. Two thousand five MLB, two uh, K, yeah. uh, two thousand five. Pretty cool. Thanks, Jim. Oh, sure. He's the gamer buff, Dove Larson. Please like, share, subscribe for more content. Dove's digital deep dive, the indie spotlights, the Gamer Buff podcast. You're watching and listening right now at Two Hats and a Beard. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Appreciate you. As always, we'll do it again in a week. Game on! Game on, Jeff. Game on, Jimmy. Making sound effects doesn't. Yeah, I'm, you didn't do it. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it this in the week. Air and went, beep, beep. You want me to? He wants me to stretch. Uh, like, this caramel. is done. I doves cut it off oh, by now. No, yeah, right. doves would probably cut it off by now. <laughs> I hope that doves cut it off. But John Dow. Yeah, that's John a good Dow. pull, man. That's a great pull. It, that's that's why Jim's there. That guy was ridiculous, man. Steve Hafen always used to. And he, I don't think he did steroids either, which is kind of cool. They went the other way, exact opposite. No, he.